good morning. Um, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I know that in India, you're a little bit surprised. You start as an ambassador and you end up in Mumbai as consulate general. Because in India, it all, it's very important, you know, the ranking. But in Norway, India is an extremely important, complicated country. In having some knowledge and competence about this civilization is extremely important when you want to do business here. And for me, now sitting in Mumbai, after five years in Delhi, uh, helps a lot. And I often say to my colleague and friend, ambassador in, uh, in New Delhi, Nils Ragnar, Mumbai has more in common with New York than with Delhi. It's two different worlds. So, with these words, I would like to say a couple of words about what we're trying to do here from a Mumbai perspective when it comes to Norwegian business and blue economy. But I also, I'm very proud to say that this publication has a long article about Norway and blue economy. So I'm not going to go in all these details when it comes to what we're doing here. I'll just sort of uh, just go through the, the political sides of this from a business point of view. So I would like to compliment the organizers for hosting this event on blue economy. I know you have been struggling for a long while to find the right date <laughs> to get your minister to come. But yes, we all know the reason why he couldn't come. I would also like to thank you to, for inviting me to address uh, you uh, on possible areas for collaboration between India and Norway in this sector. And Norway and India are two far away nations, but united by the oceans. Like India, Norway's coastline is one of the longest in the world. And the marine areas are more than five times as large as the land when it comes to Norway. In total, the blue economy, that means ocean industries, oil and gas, maritime and seafood sectors accounts for more than 70% of Norway's export earnings. And Norway is a quite rich country, as you know. So it's huge. A large number of the Norwegian companies in India are involved in the blue economy. And they have been here for a long while. We do see many great business opportunities ahead. However, for these opportunities to be viable long term, we also need a sustainable use of our ocean resources. And I think many of the speakers yesterday were talking exactly about that. Norway's position as a leading ocean nation is to present sustainable technologies and solutions in collaboration with India. And we were talking out at, uh, when we had our cup of tea today about the importance of Indian competence. When Norway now is developing really high technology within the blue economy, we are tapping in to your very competent IT and engineering competence. And I've been visiting Pune many times, like a company like Arctic very, very, or Kongsberg Digital, they are recruiting the best people in India to develop the best technologies for the Norwegian companies. We have to merge this into a Norway-India collaboration. That's very important. And again, this is with, the, with, you know, sitting in Mumbai, I see these perspectives and these opportunities. And Norway has a lot to offer. Norway is one of the few European countries with a complete maritime cluster. Norway's maritime clusters 
are diversifying out of the traditional fields of fisheries, offshore wind and oil and gas into the broader ocean industries. India can trust Norway to be a natural and reliable partner in reaping benefits from the ocean. And I really would like to see a seminar or a conference on maritime clusters. Again, yesterday we were talking about the, the separation uh, of different sectors. Maritime clusters is the solution to move forward. So if we could have you know, some interaction, get some experts both from your side and from our side to meet and talk about how we together can develop maritime clusters in India would be very interesting. And the official visit by the Norwegian Prime Minister Arna Solberg to India in January kick-started this new chapter in India-Norway relations, relations. The visit served to promote shared efforts to achieve the green transition and work towards realizing sustainable development goals. Signing of an MOU on ocean dialogue between the two countries aimed at promoting cooperation in development of blue economy. And it was really one of the highlights of the Prime Minister's visit. And I know that several of you were present there. And as a follow-up, we also had a signing of an MOU on marine littering, which is again a huge challenge. And sitting here in Mumbai, you see it every day. We have to turn it into an opportunity. The recycling economy is here to come. So, um, I note that in India, more specifically speaking about Maharashtra and Gujarat, there is a huge focus to move cargo and passengers transportation from road to sea. I think we all have been sitting in queues in Mumbai. I'm getting an expert on how to move from A to B in this huge, fantastic city. But I, every time I sit there in that car, I think, wow, we should have some electric ferries going here. So this is an area where we can really work together. And with your new airport in Navi, Mumbai, it takes 20 mi minutes with an electric ferry down to Kulaba. It's possible to do this. The technology is there. I would also like to highlight that Norway, as part of the, its commitment to the IMO goals, has committed that it will become carbon neutral by 2050, as far as the Norwegian coastal shipping is concerned. We embarked on greening our coastal shipping way back in the early 2000s, and focus at that point was to reduce NOx emissions from coastal shipping. We have moved from LNG to now batteries and hybrids for our coastal ferries in the last three to four years. So it's all on the plate. We can just start working out something here. And as we speak, we have pilot projects with hydrogen fuel as an option, which is also an extremely interesting technology. And again, I'm sure that some a lot of Indian engineers are involved in this without us seeing it. So as said, we have immense possibilities to collaborate in this area. The Consul General in Mumbai is working on promoting cooperation, yes, between India and Norway in many ways. An area of mutual concern is marine pollution, as I was mentioning. For about two years, the Consulate General has been actively involved in the Sova Beach Cleanup Project, initiated by Afrasha. And I must say, going down to the beaches every weekend, you meet this new, young, Indian, well-educated middle class. And they are taking over a lot of their fathers and mothers company, I won't say mothers because women are important. You know, and this, this middle class is so important and they are really seeing the need to clear up and to make young people understand that you have to take a responsibility when it comes to marine littering. 
So that has been an extremely interesting experience to work with Arthur Shah, and he's now, uh, he's now visiting Oslo. He will be the main guest at uh, the Norwegian Ship Owners Association's uh, yearly meeting, which is a very prestigious and important event. Interesting. And we are also uh, working uh, together with uh, Arthur Shah and, the, and several schools in Mumbai and schools in Oslo in, uh, on heightening the awareness. And the youngsters are becoming much cleverer than their parents. So they go home to their parents and tell, you know, we really have to look, uh, we have to clear up the mess. And we're also introducing new technology. And I think, again, the recycling economy is going to be the future. And by the way, we are also quite involved in Alang, in the recycling of ships. That's also a great opportunity, uh, I think, uh, for India, and it's very, very important for our Norwegian ship owners. We are also working with the government agencies in Maharashtra on providing green solutions in the development of inland waterways and port development. Huge project on port development in Mumbai. Very interesting to see how that's going to develop. And a lot of business opportunities. And Norway, again, has a lot of experience. Gujarat is another important state for Norway. Norway was a country partner at the vibrant Gujarat summit held in January this year. Norwegian shipping companies are in, interested to be part in development of Roro and Ropac services in Gujarat, and of course, offshore wind. Huge potential. And uh, one of the biggest uh, Norwegian companies within oil and gas is now moving into renewables. Equinor has now decided to go into India. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, story to see how that develops. Our official engagement with India, with Maharashtra, Goa, and Gujarat as focus region is demonstrated in the form of ministerial visits that we've had lately. We had several ministerial visits, which again is very important because when you're working with business in, our, in India, you also have to have the political level going at the same time. That's from my daily experience. So I really I welcome that and appreciate that. So on the commercial side, there are now more than 100 Norwegian companies present in India, and almost half of which are based in the Western region. And there are many, many companies on their way in. So our cooperation with India will continue to grow, and it's time to work more closely with each other and really grasp the opportunities and try to get the contracts signed. So that's a very, very important sign of my success as the Consulate General is that the companies really get their business going here. So thank you very much. I'm open for questions. And again, I hope you have time to read the article in uh, 